In this video, we're going to be calculating the efficiency of spark ignition engines, and we're going to calculate two different efficiencies. We're going to calculate the Carnot efficiency, which makes the assumption that we have isothermal processes, and then we're going to calculate the Otto efficiency, which assumes that we have adiabatic processes, and we also have heating at constant volume. So both of these make assumptions. Now, before we calculate both of those efficiencies, it's important to first understand some different terminology relating to a car's engine. So on the left hand side, I have a cylinder drawn and the cylinder on the left hand side is drawn with the piston in its lowest position. And the cylinder on the right hand side is the same cylinder, but this time the piston is in its uppermost position. Now, later in the video, we're going to be calculating the volumetric compression ratio, R subscript V, for our cylinder. But before we can do that, we need to understand a little bit more about our cylinder. And the reason we need to understand a little bit more about our cylinder is because the volumetric compression ratio is the ratio of the volume here when the piston's in its lower position, divided by the volume here when the piston is in its uppermost position. So first of all, we can clarify what we mean by the clearance volume. Now the clearance volume is actually the volume that remains once the cylinder is in its uppermost position. So our clearance volume is this volume here. And we're going to call our clearance volume V2. But in order to determine the volume when the piston's in its lower position, we need to introduce another variable. We can see from the diagram that the area above the dashed line is our clearance volume, but at the moment, we don't know what the volume is underneath the dashed line. Now, the volume underneath the dashed line here has a specific name, and it's called the swept volume of the cylinder. So here we have the swept volume. So we can see there that the swept volume is the change in volume when we go from position one, where the piston's at the bottom position, to position two, where the piston's at the top position. Now we have a way of determining the swept volume because what we have underneath is some information about our engine. Our engine has an engine size of 1600 cc or 1.6 litres. Now these are probably terms that you're familiar with when we talk about engine size, but cc actually means centimetres cubed. So what we have here is an engine size of 1600 centimetres cubed. So the important thing here is the engine size is the amount of air the engine can draw in every cycle. So if we have an engine size of 1600 cc and we have four cylinders, then each cylinder is drawing in 1600 centimetres cubed divided by four every cycle. And in this case, that's going to be 400 centimetres cubed. But note, it's not the swept volume that we actually require. It's the total volume in front of the piston. Well, hopefully you can see from that that V1 in this case is going to be the clearance volume plus the swept volume of the cylinder. So V1 is the clearance volume plus the swept volume. So now we understand a little bit more about what is meant by an engine size. And we also know how to determine the clearance volume, the swept volume, and the volume in front of the piston when the piston's in its lowest position. So next, let's move over to the right-hand side and calculate some of our efficiencies. Now, the first efficiency we're going to calculate is the Carnot efficiency. And if you've watched the previous video, then you'll know that this is the absolute maximum efficiency that any heat engine can have, not just a spark ignition engine. So we're going to calculate that first and use that as a point of comparison for our ideal Otto efficiency. So our Carnot efficiency then is one minus the cold temperature over the hot temperature. Now we have to be a little bit careful here because we need to remember to work in Kelvin. Now hopefully by now you recall that to get from degrees C to Kelvin, we need to add 273.15 Kelvin because zero Kelvin is minus 273 degrees Celsius. So we have one minus, open brackets, 22 plus 273.15 divided by our maximum cycle temperature, 1750 plus 273.15. 
Now that gives us a Carnot efficiency of 85.4%. So let's see how that compares with our Otto efficiency. First of all, we need to calculate our volumetric compression ratio, RV. And we said that RV was V1 over V2, the ratio of the two volumes. We've also said that V1 is VC plus VS. And we've said that V2 is just VC, the clearance volume. Now, as we have all of our volumes in centimetres cubed, we can work in centimetres cubed. We have VC plus VS, and note that this is per cylinder. So we have 400 plus 45, 445, over VC, which is just 45. Therefore, the volumetric compression ratio of our spark ignition engine is 9.89. And that's a ratio, so it doesn't have any units. The final step then is to calculate our Otto efficiency. And the Otto efficiency is 1 minus the volumetric compression ratio, 9.89, raised to the power of 1 minus gamma. Well, we've already said that gamma for an adiabatic process is 1.4. 1 minus 1.4 is just minus 0.4. Now running that through the calculator gives us an Otto efficiency equal to 60.0%. So what's the relevance of this information? Well, we said that the Carnot efficiency made the assumption that we had isothermal processes. But in reality, that's not the case in a spark ignition engine. We then calculated the ideal Otto efficiency, which also makes various assumptions. It assumes that we have adiabatic compression and expansion, and it also assumes that the heating of the air-fuel mixture, which is caused by the spark plug, happens at constant volume. So there are assumptions being made there, but it does enable us to see the significance of having higher compression ratios, as this will yield better efficiencies. It is worth mentioning in closing that the typical efficiency of a spark ignition engine would be somewhere in the order of 20%. And when we refer to that efficiency, what we're talking about is how much of the energy stored in the fuel actually translates into power on the road or brake horsepower. So as we can see, the assumptions that we make when calculating the ideal Otto efficiency can lead to fairly significant errors when evaluating the efficiency of a spark ignition engine.